dead ends. They of course began to worry about her state of mind, recalling how four years earlier she had struggled so much with her divorce and discussed the possibility of suicide. However, at that time, all Marion did was take a month away from it all and return full of energy and rejuvenated. They began to wonder if perhaps this was another one of those situations, but endless calls from her daughter and their own growing concerns wouldn't rest. Several days after the welfare check, the Carvers once again called the Cambridge police, this time filing a missing persons report. As an early step in the investigation, authorities pulled Marion's financial records and found that in late August, she had purchased a round trip ticket to Seattle, as well as a ticket on the Celebrity Cruise Mercury ship, which would leave Seattle and dock in Vancouver seven days later. Over the course of the next month, Kendall was involved in multiple phone calls with the Cambridge police, as well as Royal Caribbean. It took the cruise line three days to even confirm that his daughter had been on the ship. He was finally contacted by the manager of risk management for the cruise line, who explained that Marion hadn't been seen after the second night of the voyage, but assured the family that it wasn't uncommon for travelers to stay in others' rooms. Maybe she met someone else and decided to go with him or her. As for the belongings left behind, according to the Arizona Republic, Royal Caribbean told the family it was normal for passengers to leave items behind. In fact, it happened all the time. While her clothing had been donated for some reason, they were still in possession of other items, although not that manila envelope. The discs in Miriam's purse were loaded into the computer and their contents emailed to Kendall. He and his family spent days poring over the poems on the discs, looking